If you're going through a breakup or you know someone who is going through a breakup, check this video out because this is going to show us what not to do. Tell them I got the juice. When there's a breakup, it's exceedingly hard, especially if the person is young. Why? Because the relationship represents the whole future. They know there are other people, but it sort of feels like the whole world is, is shutting down. The brain has to think that the person is gone in time and space. This wow. has become much harder with social media, right? Because people can check up on people. They can hear from people in the old days. Like when I was growing up, you just like, took the phone off the hook or you, you diverted your attention. Now yeah, so this is why it's important, man. If you go through a breakup, no matter how nasty it is or maybe how agreeable it is, you come to a mutual agreement, whatever the case is, I do think in some respect it's it's important to make sure you go through your socials. Unfollow that person. If, if there isn't any kind of point where the breakup ended up in a friendship or – you know, y'all agreed to be mutual friends, all those kinds of things, especially because of how emotionally tied you were to this person. There's a lot of things that you're going to have to do to separate yourself from this person. I mean, this is like kind of coming back to a whole new state of living almost, because as he mentioned, it's like you're so locked in. That was like your future because you anticipated so much to happen. And even though you understand and you recollect there's more people out there, it's just kind of hard because you envisioned a lot with them, right? So you're having to come back and redo this whole thing. And now with social media, it's renewing everything else. It's reigniting everything. So go through, unfollow that person. Unfollow that person, unsubscribe from him. Um, you know, you need to get that person's number out of your phone, like, like go, go through, delete the pictures, like all that, man. Cause a lot of that stuff again is going to just reignite a lot of things. Um, but there is, again, as we keep watching, there's, there's an important factor to keep in mind. I think so many people are missing in today's generation of dating and building relationships that I think would actually create a healthier navigation through your breakup. Uh, so let, let's keep listening. Now we are constantly renewing that the person is still there. And so love and the loss of love and the death grief are virtually identical. Yo, love and the loss of like grief, the loss of love and death grief. That's wow. That's that's tough. A motivational statement. This is why it's so hard to not reach out to somebody that you really miss and want back. I saw a study last week that had researchers asking participants to rate emotional and physical pain of a breakup. They found that women tend to be more negatively affected by breakups, reporting high levels of both physical and emotional pain. But while breakups hit women the hardest, they tended to recover more fully. Men, on the other hand, rarely fully recovered. Yo, don't, don't mind me. I'm just drinking some grape juice. <laughs> you get it? Okay, never mind. Check this out. Women tend to take the breakup the hardest emotionally, but also tend to recover fully, whereas men rarely fully recover after a breakup. Very interesting. Let's keep listening. It's, it's, it's coming up. I thought that was very interesting. I wasn't too sure what that meant. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, it also rings true with my, my experience and my observations. It's, I mean, this could relate to a number of things. And here I'm painting with a broad brush, right? You know, how comfortable one is feeling their feelings, is male or female, is going to strongly dictate how quickly one moves through grief. This is the same thing as trauma. The more willing someone is to feel the full depth and intensity of the feelings that they associate with that trauma, the more quickly they're going to move through the trauma. Uh, again, I'm lifting from Paul Conti's words, so these aren't mine, but you know, people use a number of strategies. They use distraction. They use states like, uh, they sublimate to things like anger um, and avoidance of various kinds in order to not feel the traumatic feelings or not feel the breakup. People, you know, uh, try and self-soothe with alcohol or try and self-soothe with multiple new partners or whatever it happens to be. It doesn't work. It just extends it because this map of space, time, and closeness needs to be fractured. And the only way to do that is for the brain to have to confront the reality, which is that by breakup, they are no longer available. It's like the food on the other side of that wall is gone. It's just not there anymore. Uh, or that the food that was accessible, now there's a wall in between and you will not get through it. And you know, you can see this actually in animal studies that are kind of hard, they're actually very hard to watch. You'll see the animal perseverate, literally damage its own body trying to get through a barrier to something that's highly motivated to see. People do that post breakup. They usually do that by talking to everybody about the breakup, um, which is its own form of perseverating on the motivation. What did I do? What did I do wrong? This and, that. and some of that analysis is healthy, some of it's not. Okay. All right. I got to put it on pause. I know I was kind of pausing throughout it because I was thinking about it. I was going, but it's going fast. I got to speed it up. So look, finding how so many people again after a breakup post breakup you kind of see a lot of this behavior take place whether it's multiple partners you're working hard you're self-soothing through alcohol it's all these different devices that you'll go to to try to process or at least rid of yourself from that right and he's kind of going into the neuropathic or the neuropath of of the breakup in the brain and so essentially um you have this this you have to literally tell yourself um, to embrace the reality, because without embracing the reality, 
you'll find yourself going to every other device to kind of rid of the of the feeling. And he's like, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. This is why you don't you aren't able to recover from the breakup. Right. It's it's not because there's so much at least um, excessive attachment. It's because you have yet to really process what's happening. You have yet to allow yourself to feel your feelings in order to recover. And he relates this to trauma. And so this is so intriguing and important. Um, I can actually remember so many times where maybe not necessarily for me, a breakup, perhaps, um, at least, but but through, but through, of course, this is specifically talking about breakups. I do have an example I'll share later at the end where I, I felt as if I went through that because of such an emotional connection and what I did to to kind of deal with that and navigate that to get to where I am now. But um, regarding, you know, other friendships and, and disconnecting from close relationships in my life that I really cared about, um, there were a lot of things that actually being a basketball player, uh, being somebody who really invested my time into getting stronger, getting better at the sport, the gym was easily the place I went to, right? Uh, it was it was a way to get my mind off of things, get away from things. Um, I would be in the gym for hours. It, it, you couldn't get me out of there. I was a gym rat. Okay. And it wasn't just because I wanted to get better at the sport. It was also because it was a mechanism. It was a coping mechanism. It was something that I used to be able to get away from certain things. Um, whether it was that or, Hey, I didn't, there was a moment, there were two examples. I know I've shared on this channel before where I was ghosted twice. Okay. Um, by two different females in the span of maybe like six to eight months or so. Um, maybe that's even a bigger gap, uh, than I remember, but uh, both of these girls, I, I actually engaged in conversation with um, enjoyed things were going good and all of a sudden just gone and it jacked me up. So what did I do? Well, I actually ended up turning to, um, talking to multiple women at one point. Like, this is why I talk so much on the, on like the red pill stuff and all that band. Cause I've experienced that y'all. Like I've been there. I understand where that comes from. I understand how that, how those habits even formulate. Um, and it comes from places like what I'm, discussing you were ghosted something happened to where you felt thrown away trashed um all those kinds of things and so it, it those those thoughts creep in and you tell yourself like yo i'm never going to get here again like they're never going to get this side of me again because every time and, and you almost and you generalize it and you you notice how it only takes one time for you to say every time but really it's not every time it was just that one person it took me a while to get that but you you just begin to generalize everybody into this one category from this one person, from this one experience. And I, I did that. And so, man, I, I told myself I'm done, like being, being vulnerable and being open and honest and all that, because like, it didn't get me anywhere. And, and really it hurt me. Um, I went, I, I, I talked to multiple females. I would meet a girl, talk to her for two weeks online and then just go like, that's kind of how I even amped up my own ghosting. Um, because I didn't want to be the first to get hit by that again. Uh, Cause I remember what that felt like. And it was a response mechanism, man. And it was a coping mechanism that actually didn't allow me to deal with the sour emotions and feelings, the anger, the frustration, um, the confusion. I didn't deal with it. And so I just went on to do so many other things. So this is so spot on at, at how the brain is operating, how it works um, how you're seeing that. And, and it's so important, y'all, for us to, to really just focus in and get this, especially if we are wanting to build healthy, happy, whole, and biblical relationships. This is huge. Like there's a huge component to feeling the feelings and allowing yourself to literally feel those intense moments. And, and I think one of the things that I'm learning about my own generation and culture where we are today is there's just less and less willingness to sit, to ponder, to think, there's less willingness to actually wrestle with a lot of the emotions that we're feeling internally. Um, and there's so much more pra appraisal and push to go and deal with your feelings through X amount of devices, whether that's, you know, being a workaholic and, and being locked in your office and doing work, you bring work home, you, you go to work, you do all that 24 seven, you're trying to find yourself getting away from it. Maybe it's a food addiction. Maybe it's gaming and binge watching Netflix. Um, maybe it's, it's doing all these other different things to get away from it. And there's, there's a lot of unhealthy programming that takes place there that doesn't really give us the result that we want. Um, the resolve that we're looking for, we have a way of labeling that as healing. And we have a way of telling ourselves that we're actually doing something by doing that. 
But in reality, we're not. So let's finish listening to this. And then I got a verse I want to show you um, that I think is really comforting if you're experiencing a breakup and going through something like this. Now, why would one group be, let's just say, effective at dealing with breakups? It's probably the ability to really feel the full intensity of how sad it is and be able to confront that. I think from a very early age, there's a, an ability that at least I'm sure it transcends to women too, learning to pack down feelings, right? And so when are we really talking about when we talk about pack down feelings? I'm not a psychologist, but what we learn is top down control, forebrain to autonomic control. It's the same thing like, I don't want to jump off the high dive or I don't want to do this public speaking, but I'm going to, I'm going to kind of like, I'm just going to force myself. I'm going to David Goggins it, right? Grief is, a, is an autonomic state. Uh, we say it has valence, has negative valence, but it's high levels of autonomic arousal with a negative connotation because you can be high levels of autonomic arousal with happiness, right? You can be very alert and aroused and happy, very alert and aroused and sad. It's very alert and aroused and sad. And yet we learn how to tamp that down. What is tamping down? It's reducing our heart rate. It's going to work each day, being a functional human being. You know, there's a lot of that rather than allowing ourselves to, you know, sob uncontrollably into a pillow. Um, some people are better at this. I mean, the late Steve Jobs was a big proponent of scream therapies. He used to go up into the hills behind Stanford. He actually owns, still owns a property back there. He was really into, ah, you know, catharsis. Cathar Let me know if you guys have done that. Do you guys participate in any kind of like scream therapy, um, any type of therapy that you do? to deal with the heartbreak heartaches that you're going through let me know in the comment section below i'm curious um i don't know if i necessarily say that i do that in a therapeutic sense i know i've had moments where i've done that but i don't think it was necessary i mean it was literally just because that's why i was feeling the moment it wasn't necessarily because like hey this is something i do therapeutically you know because i got a lot in me and a lot of pent-up aggression um but as you heard him say right like okay well what does it look like right um to kind of find ourselves trying to negate the emotions and the feelings right considering that seems to be the best way to deal with the breakup well what do we do well maybe we don't um you know maybe we don't necessarily become an alcoholic or move in alcoholic ways maybe maybe it's not anything to that extreme but maybe it's just getting up every day and going to work every day right um, instead of actually just giving ourselves a, a moment and a process to, to just cry our eyes out. Like, and I know that like, it's not necessarily calling for you to call off work to do that. Um, but, but really like just giving yourself space and time to just let it out. Cry every tear as you're writing the journal, as you're expressing how you felt, as you're expressing what happened to you, write it out, cry every tear. And, and there's there's such great impact to us psychologically, emotionally, when we're able to admit that this hurt, this hurt, this sucks, this is not fun. And there's great like impact and forward progress made when we're able to get to that place. Fartic release of internal state that he felt would allow him to like return to a happier, nicer person. He was also kind of well-known for screaming at people in the office. So he obviously had a lot pent up inside. Um, so I think the better that we can lean into the emotional states that we fear the most, but in a controlled way where we're not harming ourselves or other people, the better. The more that we try and avoid that and we try and sublimate or just, you know, and I've done this, so I'm speaking from experience, you know, I would use the anger or the sadness from an experience to just work 10, 10 times longer, 10 times harder to just get that much more focus. You're taking that autonomic arousal, that narrow aperture and that energy, and you're putting it onto something that moves your life forward. So in some cases that's good because you still need to function, and it give, but it can give you the, I'll just say, it, it gave me the illusion that I was working through something because you get all the accoutrements and rewards of hard work. What you don't do is remap that space-time closeness map. And then you find, I guarantee, you find yourself five or 10 years later wondering why you're so exhausted or why certain things in life aren't going well. And it's because, well, let me say, you haven't dealt with the loss. You never actually allowed yourself to feel the feelings. But once you do, it's like a valve at least but that's it man and he's and, and and get it it's a controlled right it's 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 a controlled way we want to address it in a controlled way so in some aspects taking that energy and focusing it on something that's progressing your life forward can be a good thing because you're productive and you're still moving forward right but at the same time we don't want to overuse that energy and take all of that pent-up energy inside of us from the result of the breakup, the emotions, the anger, the frustration, the confusion, the sadness, the grief. We don't want to turn that all into becoming the workaholic and abusing our time uh, in the workspace and abusing ourselves in formalities of devices and distractions. We want to be able to give ourselves that time to feel the feelings. And oftentimes we take that energy and we just throw it all onto trying to get rid of it and negate it instead of moving in moderation because yes we still have to wake up we still have to you know put our hands to whatever's in front of us work school whatever it is at the same time however we also need to give ourselves time 
to deal with the emotions, to confront them and embrace them, take on the reality and be able to deal with that uh, because that's how we're better able to deal with it. And again, like I mentioned earlier, it is a tough thing to, to deal with your internal feelings, but we really don't get anything at the end of the road by just negating it, right? This is where you get the term hurt people hurt people, right? Because so many people are hurt and there's no willingness to really deal with those emotions, admit to that pain, admit to that frustration, admit how that interaction with that person made you feel, how that, you know, breakup, that departure made you feel. And so what we do is we take that and we throw it other places, whether that's having multiple partners, whether that's increasing body counts, whether that's all that kind of stuff. And what we do is we actually don't get the healing that we're looking for psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. We don't get the healing there, um, we actually just, in a lot of ways, transfer the pain. Um, because now that person, not necessarily saying that they're numb and hurting because of what you did with them or towards them, but really because now like we, we don't take into consideration, well, maybe that person was actually looking for something genuine and we never really dealt with our own wounds. So we just went in, got with them because it was open, it was available. And I felt like I needed it and I had nowhere else to go. And this, and I absolutely had to have it because it was better to feel somebody and be felt on than it was to be known again. Because it's better and in a lot of ways for a lot of people in these moments, it's 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 better to feel anything else than what you're feeling in that moment. So I guess in a lot of ways, right? It's better for me to get with this person and do a lot of feeling and touching, grabbing and hugging and in and out. Like I'd rather do all that than actually get to know this person. This person get to know me, my walls come down and now I'm actually an emotional mess because I never really dealt with the pain. But in actuality, the latter is better than the former because I'm actually getting healing through the latter. Whereas the, the first, I'm, I'm not really getting the healing that I'm looking for. I'm just distracted. Um, and I'm actually trying to negate this emotions to something different that actually isn't beneficial in the long game of life. Um, and so this is a beautiful video. I don't want to take uh, all the time in the world. Just some thoughts there. Here's a scripture that I want you to keep in mind uh, as we move forward. All right. So check this out with me. Psalm chapter 34, verse 18, which reads this. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. I really... This is a psalm that is was so beautiful to me um, in, mom, in a moment that I experienced this past year. Um, nothing new to those who know me and who have encountered me and I've, I've shared about it. Uh, but this verse, along with actually, as I've learned and grown, journeying through the book of Isaiah, learning about restoration, all these things, man, God is near, man. God is near. And when we give our ear to him in our moments of dryness and brokenness where we've tried so much, we've tried so many avenues, and they don't seem to bring us the healing and restoration we need. Instead, we're walking around in circles. When we give our ear to God, man, and allow him just being open with God, just being honest with God, like, God, this hurt. This person hurt me. Um, I am crushed. I don't know where to go. And you're filled with tears. You're filled with anger. You're filled with bitterness. You're filled with all the emotions that you could possibly have. And allowing God to just really work in us, through us, and really reshape the broken pieces in our lives and putting us back together for his glory, for his kingdom, and for us to actually walk in this life healed and no longer bleeding on people who didn't cut us is such a better result. And it's a tough one, right? It's not easy. Journeying through this is not easy. Um, you'll have many a nights where you'll cry, many a nights where you'll be frustrated, many a nights where you might raise questions. You might have some desire to want to go back and want to text this person back and want to really check on their Instagram and see what they're up to and see who the other person is. And if they're, you start falling into the comparison and, and you start doing all those kind of things. And it's so easy. And all of us have experienced that in some way, shape or form. But my encouragement to you is to lean into what God has for you. Lean into what God is telling you, speaking to you over your life. Remind yourself of who God has created you to be, the purpose and plans that he has for your life. Remind you that you are, you bear the image and likeness of God. You bear his image. And it is in Christ that you're healed. Remind yourself that through Christ, through Christ, you are everything you need to be. You are where you need to be. And in him is where you can really be full, whole, and complete. Remind yourself of, of who God is. Remind yourself of his name. 
remind yourself of his mercies and grace. These kinds of things is really what soothes us in these moments that allows us to come on the other side and said, man, I wouldn't have made it without him. I wouldn't have made it without him. And he's near the brokenhearted. He's close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Now, again, like I said earlier, I was going to share a little bit of brief of my story. Listen, I encountered a wonderful, wonderful uh, woman, man, this past year, uh, actually at the end of 2022. Uh, good friend. We're, we're good friends now. Um, but at the time, man, I, you know, we came in with with certain, you know, goals, expectations, those kinds of things went on three dates. It was all good. And then at the end of it, man, you know, I took what she shared with me so personally. I was broken. I was hurt. Um, she wasn't ready. She wasn't in the space. She didn't have the time. She wasn't really in a, in a place where the capacity was there. And in that moment when she shared that, I was broken. I was crushed. Um, and no, again, this isn't in a formality of being in a full romantic relationship or anything of that sort. Um, but things were going really well. Right. And it seemed like things could have been trending in such a direction. And then that showed up. And so, man, I was genuinely loving being authentic, being who I am. And it crushed me. It hurt me um, so many nights where I, or I was I was crying tears. I was frustrated. I was raising questions. I was confused. Right. I, I didn't really know what to do. I've never really experienced anything like this. Uh, and it was coming back around, actually, maybe a month in time where I actually allowed myself to deal with those feelings, feel my feelings. I was able to actually get the healing I needed. I journaled out my emotions. I, I let myself feel everything that I was feeling in that moment, being honest with myself, like, yo, this hurts. This hurts. This is not fun. This sucks. Um, coming into accountability and coaching calls and just expressing how I was feeling. And um, it was then, it was then where I was able to get the clarity I needed. I was able to really, really assess my emotions and not take them out on other people or reuse that energy and place it in things that actually weren't going to benefit me. Um, I didn't want to turn into the individual who said, man, no, I'm done with these feelings. I didn't want to go back there, right? Because we've experienced that. And so, um, man, I, I really was able to internalize it, felt the emotions, dealt with it. Um, and it actually gave me the strength after dealing with it, after doing all that I needed to do in those spaces in prayer, um, talking to other people through it um, and getting the help and, and really healing that I needed. I able I was able to come back. I was able to come back, get some clarity, try to figure out what happened, where things you know took off. And we had a phenomenal conversation and things move forward. But I tell you this story because this is something that I can relate to. I've been here. I've experienced something like this, um, whether it's close friendships, relationships, potential relationships, those kinds of things, no matter what the stage is, listen, you have to be willing to acknowledge that that thing stung, that it hurt, that it really, really messed you up because the longer you go without acknowledging it, the longer you'll go hurting. And as a result, you'll never get the healing you need hurting other people along the way. And when we really consider that, I think when we really take a second to take a step back and just consider that, I think we will actually be able to be transformed in a way that will be a testimony to who God is, to his healing, uh, to his power, to his grace and mercy, uh, to his tender love for us. Uh, and it's a testimony uh, that shows us, man, that we don't have to get to certain places, man, where we use what hurt us to hurt others, but we can actually use that the, the hurt can actually be something that transforms us to being something better. And that sounds so weird and so out of pocket and out of place. Um, but I'm telling you, man, when you use what hurts you as a weapon, we don't get the justice that we really are looking for in those moments. Um, we aren't getting the help we really need in those moments. But in actuality, when we sit through, we feel our feelings, we admit that it hurt, we admit to ourselves that it sucked, we admit to ourselves that it really jacked us up, that's when we're able to move forward. And, and it's not dramatic. Um, it's not dwelling in it because there's a purpose and a means to it. Typically, when you dwell in something, there's no purpose and means to it at the end. You're just there. Right. Whereas you can actually grieve whatever it is that you are losing and there's a purpose, there's a means to an end. So the means is, man, now I'm able to get to a place of acceptance, understanding. I'm able to make room for some things now instead of actually just sitting here. Right. And so, no, it's not dwelling. It's not you, man. I'm just sitting here and I don't know what to do. No, there's a difference. 
there there's a difference between that and so really really embrace that acknowledge that um but there's great power in admitting how you feel admitting where you are and allowing yourself to feel those feelings as tough of a season as it is as tough of a time as it is and as potentially long of a time it is right there is no timetable um there is no timetable to those things healing is not linear you'll have roller coaster rides in in that process um, so don't rush yourself into thinking that, well, I should be over it by now. You thought you were, and then a song came back up. You thought you were, and there was a, a quote or something that reminded you of that person that came back up. Like, don't put yourself in a position where you're putting a timetable on that healing. Allow yourself to journey through that. But just journey, my, my biggest message and encouragement to you is journey that with God. Um, giving your ear to anything else is going to more than likely derail you from really getting the healing you need because other people through culture and social media will tell you that you just need to do this, do that. And the third, and it has nothing to do with actually being transformed it has everything to do with giving into your passions and impulses in the moment for you to become distracted from your pain instead of actually getting healed from your pain. So my encouragement to you is to lean into the word of God, allow him to speak to your life, speak to your heart and allow him to do the inner work and healing that you need in order to move forward and get the relationship that you need in your life, be connected to the people you need in your life and move forward and not look back. All right. So I appreciate you guys all so much for checking this out. Hey, listen, if you like this video, definitely subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. So you know, the next time we're posting like this video, share it with a friend who also would like to have some insight on what not to do in a breakup. Uh, and of course, what not to do is to ignore the feelings. What you should do is feel the feelings. All right. So I appreciate you guys oh so much. And until our next conversation, be easy and be breezy, my friend. Hey, peace.